This morning on DC News Now, are you ready for the 80s? Well, we're going to be seeing those highs topping out right around 80 later on this afternoon. Even warmer tomorrow. Of all latest details coming up. A weeks long manhunt comes to a deadly end. What we know about a former chief of staff's final moments on the run. Plus, we're just hours away from former President Donald Trump's arraignment in New York City. What to expect ahead of his courtroom appearance? Students and teachers in Tennessee walking out of class to rally at the state capitol why they're calling for change this morning. The station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. All right, good Tuesday morning to your time right now at 6 o'clock. Thanks for joining us. I'm Corey James. I'm Randy Bass in for Tania Ray. Starting off this morning by taking a live look outside the Washington Monument. Looking beautiful on this dark early morning. Jackie's going to get warm and nice from here. Yeah, we're going to be tracking those highs right around 80 later on this afternoon. We're just seeing those temperatures though out there this morning. Still a warm start out there, noticeably warmer than yesterday morning. We're currently 53 in Hagerstown. 40s though, Martinsburg, Kaiser, Cumberland, Luray as well. Mid 50s, Culpeper and Fredericksburg. Right now in the district are coming in right at 56 in Lexington Park. We're still consistently holding on to 60 degrees. That temperature difference from yesterday morning to this morning, many of us running around 15 even close to 20 degrees higher than we were yesterday morning, but notice Manassas nearly a 30 degree difference at this hour. Southerly wind right now relatively light 3 to 10 miles per hour. We'll start to notice those winds continue to be mainly out of south and that's going to be pumping in that warmer air for the day today. Across the DMV we are quiet and much more uh, active farther off towards our north out across uh, the Great Lakes region even out towards uh, north or uh, I should say upstate New York. But as we talk about our forecast for the day today we're going for the 50s right around 7 a.m. to 70s by 11 a.m. by 3 p.m. We're talking about those temperatures climbing into the low 80s under those mainly sun filled skies. It'll be quite a warm day out there today, but even warmer tomorrow. For all the latest details on those numbers coming up as Shanika's here with the all important traffic update. How are those roads right now? Well, we're still on the Capitol Beltway, Jackie. This is the inner and outer loop stretch. You're still looking okay. Your visibility, though, is really low. So do be aware of that. Let's flip over to the map. So we do have some problems off of the Beltway and through Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania Avenue. Once you get to Woodyard Road, you cannot get through. So that crash happened right between Pennsylvania Avenue and Rosaryville Road. You could see the stretch here. You cannot get through. It is purple there. We have a crash pulling down poles and wires. So you expect police to be on scene there. You cannot get through again. So I would avoid it. Top side, lower side is still looking wonderful right now. Looking at Northern Virginia, 6695. The mixing bowl area is looking pretty good. The only problem you have with delays are on DC 295. That's heading southbound. All right, Shadika, thank you. Your time right now is 6.02. And your no and go headlines, Roy McGrath, chief of staff to former Maryland Governor Larry Hogan, is dead. McGrath was wanted by authorities for three weeks after failing to appear in a Baltimore court last month. Today, former President Donald Trump set to appear in a Manhattan courtroom after being indicted on criminal charges last week. The charges against Trump are related to alleged hush money payments made during his 2016 campaign for the White House. Trump's arraignment is scheduled for 2.15 this afternoon. And a man is in custody this morning after being accused of stabbing and killing a woman at a Northeast D.C. motel. Police have identified the woman as 31-year-old Christy Bautista. Now, police say she was in town for a concert when the suspect, George Sidnor, knocked on her door and attacked her. Breaking overnight, D.C. police investigating a shooting in Southeast, saying it happened on 46th place around midnight. Detectives say they found a man on the scene with a gunshot wound. Police say he was later pronounced dead on the scene. Officials say they have taken the suspect into custody. This morning, fire officials say no one was hurt after flames tore through an apartment building in Largo, Maryland. Fire crews got to the scene a little after 7 p.m. They found fire shooting through the roof of a three-story building. Crews say that fire was accidental. Right now, the Red Cross is working with residents of 12 units who have been displaced. The nationwide manhunt for former Governor Larry Hogan, chief of staff, who was wanted on fraudulent charges, is now over. Authorities say Roy McGrath died after a confrontation with the FBI yesterday evening. DC News Now's Tosa Fakile is live in the newsroom with the latest on this story. And Tosa, we know authorities, they found McGrath in Tennessee. 
That's right, Corey. The FBI confirmed McGrath was injured during the arrest when he was found in Knoxville, Tennessee. The author authorities say he was taken to the hospital where he later died. McGrath's attorney also confirming to DC News now that McGrath is dead. But it is unclear how he got injured during this confrontation with law enforcement. So here's what we know so far. Officials say McGrath was found at about 630 last night at an inter intersection in Knoxville, Tennessee. Authorities had been searching for McGrath, who had been on the run for three weeks. He was wanted by authorities after he did not show up in court for his federal fraud trial in March. The FBI says when they found McGrath, there was a confrontation. McGrath was wounded and an FBI agent was involved in a shooting. McGrath's lawyer Joseph Murtha also confirmed the former political aide died from his injuries. In a statement, McGrath's lawyer also said, quote, it is a tragic ending to the past three weeks of uncertainty. It is important to stress that Roy never wavered about his innocence. Also releasing the statement is former Governor Larry Hogan. He also says he, Hogan said he and his wife Yumi quote are deeply saddened by saddened by this tragic situation. We are praying for Mr. McGrath's family and loved ones. Now McGrath faced up to a maximum of 100 years in federal prison if he was convicted for several charges. One of those charges includes stealing hundreds of thousands of dollars from state government. Now the FBI says it's reviewing the shooting that an agent was involved in. For live in the newsroom, I'm Tosin Fakile for DC News Now. Back to you. All right, Tosin, thank you. Your time right now is 6.05. Former President Donald Trump is waking up in New York City ahead of his historic arraignment today. Ayana Heary with her sister station WPIX in New York City has been following this story. Uh, Ayana is live outside the Manhattan Courthouse this morning. And Ayana, what is the mood like there? Are there protesters or demonstrators at this hour? Corey and Randy, there are no demonstrators at this hour, although we did see some outside of Trump Tower yesterday, but some demonstrations are expected here just within a few hours. There is a rally that's been organized by the New York Young Republican Club. Georgia Congress member Marjorie Taylor Greene, she is expected to show up and join that protest. And Mayor Eric Adams, he had a message for anyone planning to demonstrate today control yourself. He let us know that there are 35,000 NYPD members who are on standby right now ready for any rallies or demonstrations that may develop. Right, and a lot of uh, anticipation ahead of this arraignment, this historic arraignment today. Uh, what can we expect uh, to see in that courtroom? So just before the former president goes inside of that courtroom, he will turn himself into the district attorney's office and then be brought into the courtroom for the arraignment. At that time, the indictment will finally be unsealed and the former president will get a chance to see the charges against him. We may see him enter a plea. And I also want to mention several media outlets did put in a request to have video cameras inside of the courtroom, but late yesterday the judge denied that request. However, he is allowing a few still photographers to take photos photos of the former president inside of the courtroom just before the arraignment begins. So we do expect to see those photographs uh, just a short time after the arraignment is over. All right, Ayana Harry from our sister station WPIX. We, of course, will check in with you in about an hour as this story continues to develop. Thank you. Back here at home in the district, we're learning more about a murder in Northeast where a woman was stabbed multiple times in her motel room Friday night. The woman was staying at the Ivy City Hotel on New York Avenue. That's just around the corner from where we find our Lex Juarez live this morning at the DC Police 5th District substation. Lex, we're also hearing from the woman's loved ones this morning. Yeah, that's right. You know, family and friends say that 31 year old Christy Bautista was in town for a concert when she was murdered. Now, according to police, Bautista checked into the motel just around six o'clock on a Friday night. The concert wasn't starting for a few hours. Around 7 o'clock, she had a knock on the door, and when she opened it, 42-year-old George Sindor forced his way inside. Witnesses called the police, who got there about 10 minutes later. Bautista was already dead, having been stabbed multiple times. Now her family and friends are remembering her, and they tell us that she was one of the kindest people you would ever meet. She's just a genuine human being. I loved being around her. She was so positive all the time, no matter what it was. Well, that was Bautista's friend and former roommate. She said that Bautista would visit the city often to come to EDM concerts. 
Her family also released a statement. It said, quote, our family is devastated by the loss of our beloved Christy. She brought joy to everyone who knew her and was a shining light in all of our lives. Now the suspect, Sindor, he is currently being held without bond. He is expected back in court on May 8th. Live in Washington, I'm Lex Suarez, DC News Now. Tennessee lawmakers facing protesters at the state capitol in Nashville yesterday, exactly one week after six people, including three children, were gunned down at a school. Among those rallying in support of anti-gun protests, three Democrats. Now they're facing expulsion from the legislature. Those three lawmakers have already lost their access to parking and a legislative building. They were also removed from committees as well. Our sister station in Nashville spoke with one of the students protesting with them, calling for change. I think a lot of us as students were just tired. We've seen this happen consistently over and over and over again, and nothing has changed. And I think it's really disheartening as a student, not only a university student, to see that happening, but to see what happened with such young children over and over again. It's heartbreaking. To date, only two members of the House have been expelled since the Civil War. Thursday, the House is scheduled to hear the resolution to remove the politicians from office. And a crowd of U.S. postal workers protesting outside of D.C.'s Postal Service headquarters. They're protesting a 10-year plan that would shake up the current delivery network. Postmaster General Louis DeJoy's plan would consolidate hundreds of post offices across the country. His plan to streamline, but which most of us postal workers know, is going to be a slowdown and an eventual failure of mail service. Protesters say the public are not seeing delivery slowdowns yet, and the changes could catch many people by surprise. Your neighborhood post office, you're only going to have a limited amount of time to get to it. Your mail is going to take longer to get to it. These people depend on the U.S. mail for their bills, for their checks, and for their medicines. It's important that we don't leave out rural America with what's going on in this 10-year plan. Protesters are also calling on President Biden to replace DeJoy. 